there we have it finished product budget bumper this whole bumper as you see it minus this is CB antenna that's on the CB install video cost me roughly two hundred dollars to completion okay that is including these lights rough country two inch chrome amber DRL flush mount lights Stephanie got me those for Christmas they were on sale for fifty dollars they're normally seventy so that was fifty dollars of the budget the receiver hitch was uh, roughly fifteen dollars from Harbor Freight and the rest was metal okay so I like it it looks good we're finished for now I will probably come back get some more material later come back and do like a skid plate up to underneath the radiator and all that finish it out but uh, right now we got a good solid looking bumper here's the lights so the deal with the lights is they are bright white for nighttime they shine to the angles here shine out to the itch, ditches okay and you can turn them uh, the amber color is just for looks that's for visibility you know so people can see you um, I thought they were gonna be actual amber shining amber out but they don't do that it's uh, bright white out so either bright white or amber looking at them not shining out okay I should have read more but we may come back at a later date and put a nice big light bar right here on top okay I'm gonna show you this this is gonna be the beginning of the video so you can see what you're gonna build for those of you that have no desire to see a really long detailed video of making this bumper finish the video now there's no point in you watching because it's going to be a really long boring video thanks for making it this far budget jeep wj bumper build folks I've been out the past couple weekends any extra time I've had it's been raining its butt off and let's just say I am not a very good hunter and after spending hours and hours and hours and hours doing stupid things spooking deer etc etc I've decided to hang it up first sunny day we've had in about well not even sunny it's still overcast it's just not raining its butt off so we're gonna spend this time I went out for a couple hours this morning and said you know what I'm tired of it I'm gonna go do something productive that has results at the end of it okay so we're gonna work on the bumper we've already done this top portion we're gonna work on starting our metal bumper okay so let me go put this stuff up and let's get to work
Mari Mari. All right, what is the goal for the bumper we are building for the WJ? Okay, so this is an everyday driver. I am not going to be taking this rock crawling every day, every weekend, on a regular basis. I may never take this rock crawling. This may never go to the, to the Moab uh, climbing the devil's butt crack or whatever okay this is an everyday driver I want this to be fairly lightweight I don't want to add a ton of weight I'm not doing a big old humongous monstrosity that comes way over here and comes out five foot and comes way out here we're going for minimalist mall crawler okay even though this will see more wood time trail time than your average mall crawler and we do live out here in the woods in the country have a nice muddy driveway but we are going to go minimalist bumper here's the materials I'm going to be using mostly the main material that I'm going to use is eighth inch thick flat stock that is six inches wide if you're building a big off-road rig rock crawling you're probably going to want to go with quarter inch or maybe even bigger than that but the exterior of this is mostly going to be eighth inch six wide flat stock okay Now then, that being said, for the base and the brackets, essentially we're going to make brackets right here. From there to there, I'm going to use a little bit thicker just for the structural part. This is quarter inch, a little bit thicker, twice as thick if you're a mathematician. And it's four inches wide. So we're going to use that for the beef. Somewhere in here, that's leftover material. I bought the, uh, the six inch last week. But the beefy, I'm going to go from here to here. Okay, and I don't want this bumper sticking out super far. Just enough for what we need. That being said, hold on. All right, that being said, we are going budget-mindedly. This bumper, I do not plan on mounting a winch to. That being said, I want to be able to have the capability to put a winch on there somehow. So we are doing budget. I'm rambling here. Metal I bought so far, the 6-inch. We already had the 4-inch, so I can't count that. I don't remember. I don't know what the prices of that is today. But the metal was uh, $65 after tax, okay? We went to Harbor Freight, and I bought a receiver hitch. We are going to incorporate this receiver hitch somewhere into this bumper. Somewhere. It'll probably have to be chopped down. It's a little too long right now. But it'll be incorporated into this bumper. So if we ever need to be pulled out, we've got a place to put a uh, tow hook or something and get pulled out. And if we ever want to do a mobile, a uh, 
non-permanent winch, we can throw a winch into this receiver, either in the front or the back, and have that capability. And I want to do some lights on the bumper as well. So enough talking. This is probably going to be a longer video than usual, but enough talking. Let's get some work done. All right, so what I, from what I've seen, most places that do bumpers, pre-made bumpers, they mount them in here with these pre-existing holes. That being said, you have to cut out this lip right here and over and up here to put your mounting brackets in. So we're gonna cut that out first. I'm probably gonna use an air saw or with a combination of a cutoff wheel. We're gonna try to do this bumper with budget tools in mind, all right? Cutoff wheels, grinders, Harbor Freight Welder. You could do this with plasma cutter, CNC machine, if you had all them fancy things. But we're out here in the woods. We're gonna do what budget people do. Alright, that's what we're looking at. So I cut three sides on mine. Tell me you only do two. You only do the sin side and you do the bottom. Me, I did three because I'm going to have longer brackets, wider brackets, and I'm going to do gussets from the bottom, from the top of the bracket up. So I wanted to have space to have gussets. Essentially, you've got one hole here. I don't see if you can get it in there, but there's another round hole in there. Those two holes will be where our bolts go for the top bracket. They'll get drilled out, and we're using half inch bolts. Those will get drilled out to half inch. In the bottom, I'm probably gonna make my plate have uh, four holes, essentially. So I'll have this one, this one, and then I'll use the two holes on the sway bar that they use for the sway bar, I think. Uh, there's a hole here, and we'll probably use that sway bar hole. There's also a lip at the bottom. The left tower. Right here, this lip's gotta be flattened out. So I take a hammer and flatten that out. And then we'll be ready to start on the brackets. I'll come back and smooth this out with the grinder. Got to measure from that spot inside to roughly out here somewhere where this is gonna come up. So somewhere in here. Let's make these brackets roughly seven inches. If we need to shorten it down, we can. Yeah, let's go seven inches. All right, for those of you that are new to this metal fabrication, it's easier to cut cardboard than it is metal. So what we're going to do is we're going to make cardboard template. Cut that out. We'll take that over to the Jeep and we'll make all of our cuts and measurements on this cardboard and then we'll, we'll come back and trace it out on the metal and cut the metal then. 
So there you have it. There is a slight wedge there. Not much. This piece will go all the way to that point we said, like so. And then we can flip it over and actually it will go in on the other side. So it's a mirror image of this side. I'm actually going to cut this at a slight angle and I'm going to have a piece of metal coming up right here. So while I got that wedge in, I'm going to go ahead and cut that angle in. Alright, so here's our metal, here's our template. I'm going to put this roughly over here. Crash it out. And there we know where to cut. We take this, mirror it over. along those lines and we'll have our brackets we got to put holes in probably going to take this over there and spray paint the holes where they need to go and I'll actually punch these center punch these real quick before we cut them out kind of hard to see here I'm backwards I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to mark my holes here essentially mark those two holes where the two holes will be. I'm gonna go ahead and clamp this whole piece down I'm going to go ahead and drill my holes at the up, up to half inch wide. The reason I'm going to do that is because it's going to be easier to drill them while I got this whole sheet here. Gives me the extra support clamp down. That way I'm not trying to fight a real small piece. All right, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and weld these bolts in. Now, before you do any welding on the vehicle, it's a good idea to disconnect the battery. You don't want the charge of the welder accidentally going through and frying anything. It's always a good idea, if you do any welding on the vehicle, disconnect the battery. So I'm gonna disconnect the battery first. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna weld these bolts in just in case I can't get to them at a later time. I made these plates five and a quarter inches long. So if I put these on there, I'm not gonna be able to get to those bolts. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld those bolts in. I'm gonna put this on and then I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna take these out. I'm not gonna weld this on yet. I'm gonna take these back out 
and we're going to weld all this on the table just to get it straighter, better welds. I'm going to have gussets on the inside. I have also thrown over a welding blanket because you don't want welding splatter to get on your headlights, on the good part of the uh, grill, on your radiator, etc., etc. All right, let me show you something before this kicks your butt too. I'm glad I found this now. So my bracket here, I had to shave off some of both the sides there, towards the back anyways. You see how it's got a little indention there and there? Reason being is those ridges right there. So at the bottom you can make it wider, but as it comes up, it hits those ridges. So I had to take out and shave those off to account for the ridges because those brackets were a pain in the butt to get out. We should be good now. All right, here's what I went with. Here's what we're doing. I beveled all my edges. Beveled all my edges. We're gonna throw a couple tacks on this real quick. Probably throw a couple tacks on the inside. Make me some gussets to go here. Just gonna tack it all in before we hit it. Solid, that way we can get everything together. I want you to see what we're all working with. Literally out here in the mud. If I can do this out in the mud with cheap budget tools, you should be able to do this in a mediocre garage. Got to make time for a couple sausage biscuits. Stephanie made me. While we're over here, I'm going to show you what we're using, what welder we're using. This right here is a Harbor Freight air compressor we used for the air saw earlier. Here's the welder we're using. Titanium MIG 170. We are using 35, 035 flux core wire and I am tied into 220 power right now. So that's what we're using, 220 voltage, 035 wire, welding quarter inch slash eighth inch metal together. these up. I gotta clean them up but for right now they're good. These bussin brackets. Gotta get all that slag off. And nasty splatter. Let them sit over here and cool naturally. And we are going to put these back on real quick. Alright I want to show you this before I do anything. It is 404 and it would be pitch black out here probably by 5. So I took the rest of that four inch plate, I've got it clamped there to our brackets we made. I'm going to tack it right there. I got to get a solid tack there. I still got a little clamping here to do, but I want to get it solid over there. Then we'll come over here, clamp. I got to readjust that clamp. I don't want to pop it off right there. Then we will cut this excess off after I get a couple good tacks on there.
here is what we have done. Okay, first off, I cut me two side plates for both sides. That's the six inch flat stock. I cut that five and a half for this side. Same over here. I put that on and then I ran me two more quarter inch by four flat stock on the inside. Took this six inch, welded it on one side. This has got a curve to it. See that curve? Welded it on one side, bended it to the next, welded it, tacked it, bended it to the next, tacked it, then bended it to the last and tacked it. Actually, tacked it to there, cut off my excess, and then tacked it. So we've got a good start going on. Now then, tomorrow, if it's not raining, I need to cut a square in the front so that we can put our receiver hitch in and it will weld to that quarter inch plate. So it'll go through this one, weld on both sides, and then weld to that one. It's gotta be cut down, it's not gonna be that long. But that is it for today. Cleaned up, ready to work. As I was saying, in order for this bumper to come up, it has to come straight up and out. Guess what I can't do? I can't come straight up now because that lip is tucked under. So we were gonna cut the top off anyways. I gotta cut the tacks, make me a mark right around this lip. That way we can hopefully come straight up and out. Also, I took the nuts off 
and those have pretty much uh, my bolts, four bolts underneath, have pretty much spread themselves out into that uh, frame of the Jeep. So I'm probably going to have to jack, put a jack under those bolts and jack that up because it's so tight against those that I can't just manually lift it off. Get that off and then we'll uh, waller them holes out just a little more. Here comes the fun part, the creative part. This is where you make your wings. This is where your creativity comes in, make your own design, make it look how you want. One thing you keep in mind on this bumper we're building, you gotta come straight up. Straight up and out for this to work. So you don't wanna go under your lights. You wanna get it close to the lights, but don't go under the lights. So you gotta come straight up and out. Be sure to put your tarp over so you don't get welding splatter on your lights, on your radiator, or anything else. Pretty much you're going to be mirroring every side. I went ahead and made these. Now this is the uh, first part. It's going to come up and over. Essentially like this. Remember it's got to stay. Can't go under all that. This is one piece. See, it's got that little bend in there. I took my cutoff wheel and scored that and bent it. So that's one piece. We'll come back in here with the bead and weld that in and strengthen that up. But on the outside, you're smooth. Get these tacked in and we'll go on to the next piece. Alright, time to get us a piece of cardboard, make us a cardboard template for this top piece. And hopefully it mirrors pretty good with the other side. All right, day 47 and three quarter and a half and 15 minutes and 73 seconds into this project. What are we looking like? Made some little templates, fill in that little space there.
So look wise, upper portion, all I got left is to fill in this gap, right? I wanna go try to get to here somewhere and bring it down. I probably won't bring it down this far. It'll probably end up going something like this. But we're gonna fill in the whole thing for right now. And then we'll take a piece of tape and kind of eyeball where we want it and cut the excess out. Try to follow that line a little bit. All right, let's wrap this up for now. Here we are in bare metal, 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 metal. Looking pretty good. I'll probably curve some of that bottom a little bit. I'm gonna come back in on the back side. See, these are just a little bit flimsy. We're gonna add a gusset somewhere in here. Right in here, that'll make that all solid. Do that while the bumper's off. For now, we're probably just gonna leave it attached with the four bolts. I don't think I have enough. Well, I probably do, but we'll come, I'll come back off camera and probably make those bottom, bottom uh, brackets. All right, folks, here we are. Got her all cleaned up, smoothed out. Pain in the butt because it's flux core. We've only got one thing left to do as far as welding. We gotta weld old Leroy on. They're always eating like a dragonfly looking thing. Get her welded on. This is gonna hurt you more than me, Leroy. All right, so yesterday I ended up painting this in the shipping container. A, it was a little too cold outside, and B, it was sprinkling, so I didn't want to ruin my paint job. Normally I wouldn't paint in here, but I had to do what I had to do. I had a fan, got a fan over there, blowing the fumes outside while we were painting. I let it set all night with the heater in the shop. We're gonna install it today. We used, uh, sprayed some Rust-Oleum Gray Primer base coat. Came back with a uh, Krylon hammered finish, hammered black. I think it looks good.
to three degrees. It's three degrees right now. It's the coldest it's been in Mississippi since 1989. We gotta paint it up and on. Next will be lights. Just not today. All right. So I don't know if you can tell, it's snowing out a little bit. Yesterday was Christmas. We got our lights in that we were hoping for. These are two inch, lights are two inch recessed lights. These are Rough Country DRL Amber. I've got these at an angle. They're gonna be over here on one of these wings, on both of these wings angled. That way they'll shine towards the ditch a little bit, sides of the roads. Uh, I picked Amber for driving in the rain, uh, snow, fog. These will be really nice. We may come back later at some point and do a light bar right here. But right now, this is what we got. Pretty slick. Got us a template that comes with it. Basically taped out where we're gonna cut. Gonna cut most of it with the cutoff wheel. Come back with the air saw and hit these corners so we get a nice clean square out of there. All right, we got our holes cut. We are gonna have to go back inside and hang our hat up for a little bit though, because the snow is just getting too much moisture out here right now. I gotta drill holes for the lights to bolt up. That will be next, as soon as some of this snow goes away. Did get our CB antenna mounted. I didn't show that on video. That's where that's going. <laughs> 